around the city. But as the city grows and grows richer, not everyone is profiting. Every year, thousands of children vanish from India's streets and the numbers are increasing. Every day, Delhi's newspapers seem to feature prominently two major things. One of them is uh, advertising for high-rise, brand new high-rise apartments and buildings in new cities all the way around Delhi. And also, featuring prominently in some of the newspapers, are notices for missing children. 16-year-old Mahinda Begum was kidnapped from Assam in northeast India in April. For five months, she vanished without trace. In desperation, her parents, Chandan and Sanabimu, turned to child saver Rishi Kant, an activist with the child welfare group Shakti Vahini. जो लड़की लोग का बड़ा जो आसाम से तो काफी लड़कियां को किडनैप करके हरियाणा लेके आ रहा है शादी के लिए। Kidnap for marriage is an increasingly common crime around Delhi. A few days ago, Mahinda managed to get one phone call through to her parents. She told them that she's about three hours south of Delhi. They're going to try and go there today and rescue her. Mahinda told them she'd been approached by a stranger, drugged, and then sold as a bride. I wanted to know why they turned to Rishi and not the police. Chandan claimed they had told the police, but were asked for a bribe of 100 rupees, a day's wages, to register their daughter's disappearance. They said that, oh, come on, I'm a poor uh, man and my daughter have gone missing. I've come here with a written complaint. Why the hell you are asking for money? So just so I'm clear, because the parents didn't pay the 100 rupees, the police, the local police didn't act? Didn't act. Now Rishi is their only hope. In the past year, he saved hundreds of kidnapped children. Okay, so now the rescue was underway. We're going to go with the family. It's about a three or four hour drive south of Delhi to the uh, village where they believe their daughter is being held. South to the nearby town of Jin, so, he calls the local police. The last call. Legally, and he said can't that launch the rescue me, without I am in Jin. As soon as uh, they have approached us, we want uh, to approach the girl as fast as possible. That is what I am saying, sir. At first, it appears they won't assist. I'm not arguing with you. I just want the law enforcement to help me. He just told me, you should give us time. I said that if a missing child has approached the parents for help, so I should rush to that missing child immediately. And he's just now said to me, the girl was missing for five, six months. So what's, what's the big deal? Rishi finally persuades a local police chief to go into action. Okay, sir. Three hours later, the police traced the location of the number Mahinda called from. Rishi, what's happening? We are just investigating. Mm. Photo, hai na, photo. Rishi Take feared the kidnappers photo, could photo. turn violent and asked us to stay behind with Mahinda's parents. <laughs> Within minutes, the police vehicles sped back out of the village. Hi, Rishi. Yes. The girl is in the gypsy in the, in the car in the front. What happened there, Rishi? You just said that uh, when they went to get the girl, more than 200 people came around them and tried to stop them taking the girl. They just grabbed the girl with the police and ran away. So we're now following them to the police station. So I think they've got her. <laughs> After five months in captivity, Rishi successfully reunited Mahinda with her family. Oh, <laughs> my
pengen ngantuk. Hinda told Rishi her kidnapper had sold her as a bride for 350 pounds. The girl has said that all kind of abuses, beating, and uh, the girl girl is just saying that I want to say something that I was treated very badly by this. Mahinda said she'd endured five months of rape. I asked the local police commander if kidnapping was a common problem. How many women are being trafficked, being kidnapped? I don't know. You don't know? Is it very often? Yes, but I'm not going to ask I don't know this. He didn't want to answer any more questions. The man accused of buying Mahinda and his relatives arrived to protest against the rescue. Despite her giving a statement, the police said they didn't yet have enough evidence to arrest anyone. With tension increasing, we were told to stop filming. Please, please, please. A few days later, Mahinda was safely back at home in a cell. The kidnapper had not been charged. New cities, developments, offices, and tens of thousands of apartments have sprung up around Delhi over the past five years. So it's in these new cities that a large part of India's new wealthy middle class are living and working and creating new lives. Rishi told us finding domestic staff to service these new homes has created a boom in so called placement agencies that often supply children as maids for this growing middle class. A few days later, another family in Delhi had contacted Rishi about their missing daughter. We have come here to rescue a minor girl, and this placement agency is supposed to be somewhere near. Rishi said tens of thousands of children disappear into trafficking networks used by these agencies. We have seen all those girls whom we have rescued mentally traumatized, uh, physically beaten and maximum uh, cases they are also sexually abused. Are we talking here really about slavery? Obviously it's, it's slavery. That evening Rishi went on ahead with the police. He asked us to wait so he didn't compromise the rescue. So Rishi's now called us, he says we should come down to this office here which we believe is an agency which is being used to traffic young girls into Delhi. On searching the property, Rishi discovered not one, but several children. How many girls are there? Uh, there are one small minor girl and three boys. Three, uh, all underage. Um, Rishi's teammate Surinder tried to find out where this 12-year-old girl came from. These children come from extremely poor parts of India. While some parents initially agree to send their children to work, many then vanish into trafficking networks where they earn good money for the agents who use them. The family who this little girl would have been given to would have paid about 28,000 rupees, about 400 pounds as a one-off payment. They then would have paid per month for her services. But she wouldn't get the money, nor would her family. The agent would keep that money. And what happens is these children are then moved from here to homes around Delhi, so the parents actually lose track of them. One of the agents was found in the building. Why do you have these children here? They're coming to work, but they're 12 years old and they're 14 years old. Why are you bringing children to work? They should be at home. Sir, they're small, but what do you do? They come to work here and they come to work here. There's a poor town in the village. So you, you don't have any problem yourself with the fact that they're children? I mean, it, it seems very hard to understand that you would make a child go to work and you would profit from that. He denied trafficking and said he had paid the parents, but it's illegal for children to work in domestic service. He was taken to the police station and the case is pending. The rescued children were taken into protective custody. These kids are absolutely terrified. They have no idea what they're going into. 
If we believe the experts, there's a risk these children could have disappeared into lives of abuse. Rishi shows so documents all his files. seized from the well, agency. These are, his, these are his files. Yes, his files. They are dozens of pages of individual minors, particularly girls, who he has sent into domestic service. Rishi blames India's changing economy for the rise in child disappearances. You see, every family, in, especially in the major metro cities of India, both the husband and the wives are working. And when both husband and wife are working, they need someone to, who can assist the family or do the household work without giving too much of compensation. to find out how children kidnapped and forced into domestic service are treated. Ah, hello. 18-year-old Chumni agreed to talk to us about her ordeal. Five years ago, aged just 13, she was drugged, kidnapped and sent to Delhi to work as a maid. Chumni tried desperately to escape. Chumni saying that um, I kept complaining about it, I was told to be quiet. I ran away three times and the family came and got me again and dragged me back to the house. Eventually, uh, he raped me and that's when I finally left the house. How old were you, Chumni, when these rapes happened? This new pattern of exploitation deeply concerns Rishi. He invited us to a popular Hindu ceremony held at his home with his nieces and neighbours that venerate girls. Children have long been at risk in India, but Rishi fears modern pressures are increasing the dangers. From the beginning of our culture, uh, we have shown respect to girls. But there are some changes in the society which are now happening that uh, there are bad things also which is coming as we grow. What gets you moving though? Because this is tough. What, what really affects you about it personally? Once we rescue the girl, and the smile she gives, that is our strength. The smile and, the, and the, uh, the passion that girls, once she meets with the family, that is our changing, that is our inspiration, that is motivating us to, for a next day, for a next day. We said goodbye to Rishi and headed to another part of Delhi. He told us it's not just poor families who are the victims Hi. of kidnapping. Hi. Evan, nice to meet you. We were Hi. put in touch with the Sherawat family. We've come to this uh, industrial part of South Delhi because Kumar wants to tell us about a, a new type of kidnapping that's occurring here in Delhi. It's affected him personally. Hello, Ashish, how are you? Last August, Kumar's son, 12-year-old Ashish, went to buy sweets at the local shop. Hello. When he didn't come back, his father frantically searched the neighborhood. Pure gaon ke friends sab is roulette bike se ya scooter se gaadi se aas paas dhoondne lage, to bhi nahi mila. He heard nothing more until later that evening. Police ko. And then at 10:20 that night, he received a phone call from the kidnappers demanding two million rupees for their son. It's about thirty thousand pounds. So Ashish, what were you thinking when they when the men took you? The following day, Kumar received shocking news. At 4 o'clock in the afternoon, they got a phone call from villagers about 70 kilometres away. 
The villagers said, is your son missing? He said, yes, yes, of course he is. They said, we, we found him, he's down a well. Kumar collapsed, dropped the phone and fell unconscious. He thought Ashish was dead. And how high, how high was the well? Ashish had a miraculous escape. The water was only a meter deep. Ah. There was a disturbing twist in the story. He told me Ashish had been kidnapped by a neighbour. He's saying the, the kidnapper was from this area. He knew us. We, we know this guy. The kidnappers pursued the ransom, thinking Ashish was dead. They were later charged. Ashish was not targeted randomly. His family has profited from India's economic boom. Once the land their house is built on would have been all but worthless. Now it's valuable Delhi real estate. At least a hundred children are kidnapped specifically for ransom in Delhi every year. In many cases, the children are never seen again, even when the ransom is paid. We were told of another organization in Delhi trying to find missing children. We're now on our way to a group called BBA, which we're told is one of the only groups working to rescue children from forced labor. At their headquarters, the Bachpan Bachao Andalan, or Save the Childhood movement, were planning the release of dozens of abducted children. Kidnapping is not only by force, it is also by enticement. The majority of these children would be a victim of kidnapping through enticement, and some would be, uh, or maybe also through force. But uh, uh, as far as being trafficked is concerned, the offense is of kidnapping. They are uh, victims of kidnapping, in fact. Human rights lawyer Buwan Ribu has been a child saver with BBA for eight years. The group conduct almost daily rescue missions. They're about to go on the operation now. They're going to six locations where they think they're going to rescue about 40 children between the age of 10 and 16. Secrecy was vital to the success of the mission, so our local producer filmed the rescue. Huan's team swooped on the target factories. This one, making leather shoes, employed dozens of kidnapped children, the youngest just seven years old. He and his friends told Huan they weren't allowed outside. Child labor is illegal. Yet it's estimated to contribute 300 million pounds a year to the Indian economy. The government agrees there is a problem and recently set up anti-trafficking units across India. That's about 70 pounds. In total, Huan and his team from BBA rescued 52 children. That evening, the children are taken to a special BBA child sanctuary in Delhi. So some of these children would have been kidnapped, forcibly taken from their villages. Some would have been lured away with promises that they would have been taken to a better life and been given a trade, which they never were, and some would have been sold. For some of these children, it's their first night of freedom for many years. The next day, we went back to the BBA sanctuary to see how the children were settling in. Let's go, eat all the children. Then we'll play two teams. 
How many children can you keep here? Uh, we actually have a capacity of 120, 125. BBA has now saved so over 80,000 kidnapped rooms children that in are the past also being used 30 years. By, uh, They've the just area. produced Living India's first ever report on the numbers of yeah, missing yeah. children in the country. Hundreds of thousands of children are uh, going missing. According to uh, the information that we have collected, uh, for this is the first time an information uh, has even been sought. And uh, we have come to uh, very, very alarming figures. This is, Between uh, 2008 and 2010, 117,000 children went to missing to in India, the over 40,000 of whom remain untraced. In only a tiny They're fraction of disappearances are region. ever investigated. The total number of children uh, whose cases have been investigated in the country in these two years is 13,000 something, just 13,000. Now, this is a police record. A large number of children who are actually being trafficked are not even finding any space uh, in these police records. The reality can easily be more than 10 times. We can very easily say that the number of children who have been trafficked to work or trafficked for other purposes is more than 100 an hour. Extraordinary. Extraordinary. India's president is considering BBA's request to form a specialist agency to track missing children and allocate money to coordinate police efforts to help find them. Bhuan and the rescued children enjoyed a Hindu festival celebrating the victory of good over evil. The children sang songs about destroying the wicked god Ravan, depicted as a child trafficker. This group is making some progress. They are achieving some prosecutions. But the tragedy of this situation is this is really one of the only groups actually doing anything about this problem. And there are literally hundreds of thousands of children out there now in forced labour and vulnerable to kidnapping and abuse. <laughs> Until the country's most vulnerable people are protected and not threatened by the wealth of the new economy, Delhi's stolen children will continue to rely on India's child savers. Thanks for watching. Click the logo to subscribe for more award winning documentaries from the Unreported World team. We upload videos every Sunday, keeping you up to date with content from all over the world.